We are now going to go to a little bit of fun that Mitt Romney had last night with Jay Leno. A lot of Republican candidates have gone to work for Fox News. Have they ever approached you as, as being a, 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 a correspondent or something of that nature? Well, it, it, Jay, if, uh, yeah. if you ever see me sign up for a gig on Fox News, it'll be a clear indication I've decided to run for president. So, really? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So that's, that's not in the cards anytime okay. soon. Thanks. All right, there you have it. Now we are joined. This is an all Maryland edition of Top Line. We are very <laughs> happy to be joined now by Senator Ben Cardin of the great state of Maryland. And I'm going to put you right on the spot. I want a direct answer. No waffling on this. Do you have any plans to join Fox News as a commentator? <laughs> well, look, that, that may be my entry into the, the national uh, spotlight. That, that's so why I'll have to we want to know. Keep all my options open. So you are not ruling that out? <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, okay, we've got our headline. But, but moving to, to the serious matter here, this question of extension of these tax cuts, uh, what, what is your sense? The, the negotiations are going on. Are, are you willing to live with the idea of extending all of them, even on billionaires, if it's a, uh, a temporary extension? Well, I think Kathleen Kennedy Townsend got it right. But let me say this. The leader has asked us, the President of the United States has asked us to back up a little bit. Let's try to work out a bipartisan agreement. My principal objective is to make sure that we don't have tax rates going up for middle-income families. That's what I think is important, that before we leave here for the holidays, we need to make sure that the tax rates don't go up for middle-income families. And I'm willing to listen to what can come out of a compromise with the Republicans. Even if it's extending all of them? Well, that's not my preference, as I've said before. I, I think that we have to be mindful that we got to also this week deal with the Debt Commission and its recommendations. And if we're going to be serious about debt reduction, it's difficult to understand why we would be extending tax cuts for those who really should be part of helping us balance the budget. Uh, Senator Cardin, uh, just on that same topic, is it worthwhile for a deal uh, if it means getting something accomplished on the START Treaty as well. Well, you know, I find it just amazing that the Republicans would bring that up in the debate on taxes. Foreign policy should be a matter that, uh, we, put, that we don't get into a partisan division. This is a matter of national security. The completion of the ratification process on START is in our national security interest. We need to get it done before we leave. And I, I would find it a, a major uh, problem if we try to combine that with any other issues that are around here. We shouldn't do that. So help me understand something on, on START. Why is it that this has become an issue which is absolutely do or die for the month of December in a lame duck Congress? I mean, why? Obviously, okay. it's been a year since the last one expired. Why, why not? Uh, I mean, what's wrong with kicking this to January? Well, we've already reviewed it. We've had seven months of congressional debates, 20 hearings. We've had hundreds of questions asked on the record. We've had opportunities in closed sessions, open sessions. All the questions have been answered. This is new start. We've already had a start agreement. For the first time since the end of the Cold War, we now do not have a verification system as to what Russia is doing. We've got to get this done. If we hold it off to January, it's a new Congress, may require new hearings, we start getting involved in presidential politics, the election years start earlier and earlier. Let's take this out of politics and get it done. It's a national security issue. We've had Republican and Democratic leaders on, on the political front, on the, the, our military leaders, all agree that we need to get this done. Um, we just have about a minute left here, but I wanted you to weigh in a little bit on the debt commission. There's a lot of concern that there will not necessarily be those 14 votes there, but there is talk about something happening in Congress, regardless of whether there's an official report. Do you believe there will be some of these proposals actually voted on in Congress by next, you know, in, in the next year or so? I think Congress needs to deal with the recommendations of the Debt Commission. I think they have uh, come in with a credible list that could get us to where we need to be. I also believe in the legislative process. I think we're going to have to take a look at the specific recommendations. But I hope we understand that we can't do it piecemeal. We have to have a, a way of bringing our budget into balance that's fair, that um, maintains the critical services to those who are in need and relies not just on the spending side, but also the revenue side in order to balance our budget. And the Commission has been looking at that. They haven't yet come up with their vote, but certainly the initial list that's come out is a credible list. Having said that, I think Congress has a responsibility to make sure that the specifics are reviewed. All right, Senator Cardin of Maryland, uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, given this was an all-Maryland show, I hope you're having crab cakes uh, uh, for lunch, uh, Amy.
Absolutely. And in fact, aren't you a Maryland? Oh, no, not us, but no. just some drinks. <laughs>